this is just an example. Because it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't like some weird finish that the Panthers won a game they shouldn't have won. This was just butt kicking start to finish. The Falcons never could get anything going. The lesser team supposedly just showed up, Shireen, and kicked their butts. It was methodical. It was plotting. I don't know if the rain had something to do with it. You put a dome team outdoors in those elements. That used to be more of a thing in the NFL. You'd always hear that, oh, watch these dome teams when they have to go out to the elements. But the, there had to be some explanation for the fact that the Falcons last night just couldn't get going. Yeah, you know, Al Michaels made the comment there uh, in the fourth quarter that I can't believe this is a one-score game. And I'm like, wow, it is a one-score game. And you couldn't because it did feel like the Panthers just dominated that game from start to finish. And the Falcons were, frankly, lucky to be in it there late. And they were in it there late. But, you know, I, I just think the home team, Mike, in these Thursday night games has such an advantage and I don't know what the numbers are this year with that, but it, it's just such an advantage not to have to go on the road and play after a Sunday game. Uh, and I think we saw it with the Panthers, and maybe the rain did uh, help them uh, because they could run the ball, and they were, did run the ball much better than the Falcons ran the ball. So that was par probably part of it, too. But they did. You're exactly right, Mike. They dominated this game, and it felt like it should have been more uh, than 25-15. There was a time when you would hear grousing from coaches. I think Jim Harbaugh at one point complained about having to fly all the way across the country for a short week game. This was a fairly quick trip. It was It's such a short distance that Jake Matthews, the Falcons tackle, <laughs> yeah. was able to get in a Aggie car break. and drive back to Atlanta because, thank you, because his wife was giving birth. He couldn't get a flight, and then it dawned on him, it's only three hours. Jumped in a car and drove back and then caught a ride with Arthur Blank on the way to the game and got there just in time. I mean, what a day that is for Jake Matthews. He, I, I was reading an article about it on the Falcons website. He had his phone off. The hotel phone rang, which who talks on the hotel phone anymore, but the hotel phone rang and he looked at his phone. He had 10 missed calls and his wife was in labor and the baby it was about four weeks early, so he had to get back to Atlanta. He had to make a decision first. Tough decision, personal decision. Could have gone either way. Decided to go back, went back, was there, made it back, played in the game. And the whole day worked out, except for the fact that the Falcons didn't win. And they just couldn't get their running game going. You know, I, and, and I, I don't want to give credence and legitimacy to the craziness that we saw on Monday when Jim Irsay decides to just basically pull a name out of a hat and make that person head coach of the team. But football is simpler than some make it. Whether those folks are in broadcasting, whether they're connected to teams, I think they want to create a mystique that kind of protects their turf. Like, this game's too complicated for you peasants to understand. It's really not that complicated. And this is a very simple truth. If you can't run the ball, you're screwed. Because instead of being in second and five or third and four, you're in second and 10 or third and 12, and then you have to pass. And if your quarterback isn't a great passer, and maybe he was the one most affected by the elements, Shereen, but it's that simple. If you can't push the line of scrimmage, if you aren't ripping off five, six, seven, eight yards in your running game, like the Panthers were, you can't get it going. You can't sustain your offense, and you find yourself down by double digits. And yes, it is amazing to think it was 22 to 15 at one point at, in the fourth quarter, but even then, it never really felt like the, the Falcons. It was, it was 13 to 9 late in the third until Deontay Foreman's 12-yard touchdown run. I, I, but but if you can't establish the running game, none of that other stuff matters. The passing game is the thing that just really opens up if you're getting the defense on its heels because you're gashing them with the run. And if they are shutting down the run, they're in a pretty good position to shut down the rest of the offense. And that's exactly, exactly what happened to the Panthers on Sunday in Cincinnati. They couldn't handle Joe Mixon in the running game, so it was 35 nothing at halftime. 
But when you can put the clamps on the running game and they got the the three-headed monster and Mariota, they got four different guys who had more than 250 rushing yards on the team through nine games. When you can't get any of those guys going, you 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 don't have no chance, but you have a slim chance of of turning things your way. It's so funny, Mike, when you said it's such a simple game. I had a big smile on my face. I just literally had this conversation a few days ago, and I said football is such a simple game. Like, you see coaches run a play that's very effective, and then you never see it again. Like, why? I'm going back to those Cowboys days when, you know, they knew Emmett Smith was coming, except from – for the Eagles on fourth down and, and you do it twice, it gets stopped. But other than that, that play, uh, Zing. that's what the Cowboys did. They, they dictated Barry exactly Switzer what the, catching Barry, strays, as miles. Exactly. Would say. Sorry, <laughs> but you know exactly what they were going to do. And yet you couldn't stop it. And when you have a play that works to me, you keep going back to that play until they prove that they could stop the play. Same thing with the running game. When you run the ball as effectively as what the Panthers did, you keep running the ball until they prove they can stop the run. And they didn't. And you talk about the run and how important it is to run. That's why the Buccaneers right now are struggling, period, end of story. They're 32nd in rushing. And unless they get better running the ball, Mike, they're not going to win a Super Bowl this year. They're not even a contender. They're a contender for that division. They may get in the playoffs. But they're not going to win a playoff game unless they figure out how to rush the ball better. And it goes back to their offensive line, obviously. But you've got to be able to run the ball. And and I just think it's a simple part of football. It's an important part of football. They don't value running backs because they think they can throw any running back out there. And, and a lot of teams can. You look at the 49ers until the trade for Christian McCaffrey. And you look what Foreman did, which, by the way, I can't believe that he hasn't gotten more offers with what he's done over his time in the NFL, because I think he's a really good running back. Now he's on a one-year deal again. But I just think that you have to be able to run the football, to win in football, to win consistently. The, the Colts were able to win a Super Bowl many years ago with a really bad running game. But overall, Mike, I just think you have to be able to run the football to win in the NFL. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.